Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the back office teardown lab. I have a very interesting device in this box and if your TV is of high enough resolution, perhaps you can read the label, but it says ES Play Micro Open Source ESP32 games console. But before we go into that, I'll show you the background. On Hacker Day, uh, a while back, there was this article and I printed out like a bit of the first page. But you can see uh, ESP, ES Play Micro is an ESP32 based emulator device for playing retro games. And there's a whole project thing about it and there's notes and things down below. If you go onto Hacker Day IO, you can find out more about that. Now, if you didn't fancy putting together the circuit yourself, there is a rather handy company here called Maker Fabs. If you go on their website, you uh, will see they do a whole load of pre made modules, and these modules are uh, ready to go. They're not kits apart, so they're just ready to go from GPS trackers to uh, ESP12, ESP32, all sorts of modules. Look, linear micro array. And right here, you can see in the corner, it says for $37, ES Play Micro, which is this. So what they've done, I think they've uh, commercialized or made a PCB based on that Hackaday project. I don't know how, what's the relationship they even linked to it here. And um, they were giving a little bit of description, which I think is from the, um, Hackaday page basically just saying this uh, gets rid of some of the issues that people had with the Odroid. So that if you remember the old Odroid Go, you, you might recall I made a, a headphone hat for that for a digital audio converter. That apparently shared the spy bus with the SD card reader and the screen at the same time, so it had some sort of issues. So this was created to get over that. So this is uh, indeed the Maker Fabs uh, version and it came in this nice box from Amazon. Um, and it's it's sealed for your protection. So I'm just gonna search around for a knife. I think that's gonna do the trick. And uh, yeah, there's no way that's getting damaged in transit. And it's just good to go. I can even see it's got an SD card in it. Now, uh, somewhere around the back office uh, is a suitable lithium cell. But if you have a suitable lithium cell, you can actually attach it to there. It does actually have the lithium uh, battery charging circuitry on it. Now there's your ESP32W Rover chip, which is again, very similar to what you had in the Odroid Go. Um, and there's a bunch of other stuff, really. I don't really know what's on here. I have not studied this from a PCB level because it's, as I say, ready-made thing. So you don't really have to worry about it. Um, but there's your micro SD card and they do give you a card with that in that price. And it's an 8 GB. <laughs> So that's pretty good, to be honest, $37. Yeah, you're ready to go. It's got the screen, some nice um, high quality, actually, tack switches, the nice metal tack switches, and a USB wire, of which you can see the tail there, uh, that connects to there. So, ooh, I have just realized I do have a powered up USB right here. We might as well just go straight for it, mightn't we? So let's go for broke, plug that in. Oh, yep. Oh my word, look! Straight into Super Mario. No way. No way, Jose. What? It's doing the trick, to be honest with you. Look at that. Now, I notice there's no sound, so we need to hook up something. Let's hook up something to the sound. That's a bit of a shame that it seems to be headphone only, but we might um, plug in one of our modules. The ones I have on my website, you could just plug an amplifier, but maybe it does have a speaker output. So there is a PAM uh, 8403 on here, um, and there is two pins there. I wouldn't be surprised if that is an actual speaker output there. I'm just having a quick search around. Normally I do have speakers lying around. I can try that if we do. Right. So we've got our pot noodle speaker attached. Does sound a little bit on the far side. <laughs> Oops. Oh. I seem to have brought up a whole emulator screen there. Look at this. Save. <laughs> okay, that's phenomenal. Let's see if there's anything else we could do. What if we go to exit? Oh, look, it looks like a, a whole retro pie, doesn't it? Look at that, Game Gear. No Game Gear games. How do I go back? B. 
I'm not sure B is doing what it's supposed to do, really, because I'm pushing B, which is this, but it's not seeming to go back. Let's get this off. It's a bit... Yeah, there. Nice matte screen underneath. Let's try again. Woohoo! Mega Man! Ah! Yeah. No good. Anyway, we can see that there's games on there, right, clearly. And uh, I think it would need a lot more time to go through properly and assess that. I'm purely assessing it from a hardware perspective. It's got a good screen, good feeling buttons, uh, battery charger thing, great. Comes with an SD card ready to go, some games on. So I think so far it's ticking all the boxes. There are some shoulder buttons there. So let's, let's just have a quick look, okay? So you've got your shoulder buttons on the top, which could be useful in certain games. You've got on-off slider switch. You've got your USB for charging. It says here you've got an I squared C port, so you could use that for your own external projects, of course. There's your reset button there. There's a couple of pin headers there, this JP2. I suspect they are for a speaker out. You can check that from this amplifier chip. Um, and there you have your battery connector. So there's all basically everything you need to get going. You can just put this uh, together. Or I say put it together, just hook on your battery on here and you actually have a portable gaming system with a little bit of I squared C expandability for your projects. And there's a little power LED there. Now I did print something to show you, but it's not gonna work out. So this is a 3D printed enclosure for it. And I was all getting a bit excited and um, I've put the uh, little, made little D-pad and I've got little buttons and everything like that to go and uh, I did get a little bit excited and dropped some buttons uh, and so I lost one but I t it turns out that's pretty moot actually because this design is different I guess than the actual open source one because you can see the buttons don't quite line up with the bezel where you'd want them to line up so the PCB dimensioning is slightly out. So I'm guessing the original is a little bit smaller. You can see that this board doesn't quite fit in that layout. So that kind of sucks, doesn't it? Uh, and it does mean, of course, that I can't see how good or bad this D switch is when you hook it up that way. So yeah, I suspect if we look around, there would be other projects on there. Uh, doing this same sort of thing. Uh, so you can see there's the screen and there's a little bit of a cutout for this ribbon connector. So it would be bloody nice, wouldn't it, if this actually did fit. It doesn't seem to really want to fit on uh, many of the dimensions, to be fair. So yeah, I guess we'd have to take this project and work on it. But if you want to start giving it a go anyway, you could do worse than finding the ES Play Micro from MakerFabs. That's makerfabs.com and uh, you can have a play. Um, what I'm going to do is when I finally get a case for it made up, I'm going to really hook it all up, you know, put the battery on and make it a little portable handheld so I can really experiment on it because I don't like playing with raw PCBs like this. It does. It would be better. More more fun, I think, to have it into something, and just it'd be. Cu I'm so curious as to how these buttons feel when they are hitting those micro switches underneath. But, yeah. I think for the money, that's probably good. Good to go. Get to get good to get started with, and maybe just maybe, if it's any good on the Game Gear stuff, I might see if we could resuscitate an old dead Game Gear. You know, just by popping this in instead. There we go. As ever, thanks for watching. <laughs>